So hey, my name is Chris. Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to be going over the Women's Health Initiative. This was kind of two main papers I want to look at. This was the Rousseau et al. paper in 2002, as well as the Anderson et al. paper in 2004. These two papers were focusing on just pretty much the main question on how is hormone replacement therapy in postmenopausal patients. The reason why this paper came about was, and this was an NIH funded paper, the reason this came about was that, you know, the prevailing theory in OBGYNs were that hormone replacement therapy, which I'm going to now refer to as HRT, is amazing and awesome and everyone should be on that. But medicine docs were thinking, hey, actually, this is not the case. Hormones are not always that good. So the question was, okay, what are the risks and benefits for patients who are taking HRT? So for the main findings from the entire research truly are that there are no increased risk in breast cancer, no increased risk of stroke or VTE. There is probably a decreased risk in osteoporotic fractures, as well as coronary artery disease, and this is specific for patients who are age 50 to 59. That is the findings from what the research shows, but what the paper stated, and this paper actually was ended prematurely because they had met preset boundaries in certain risk categories, was that there was an increased risk in VTE, stroke, breast cancer, as well as coronary heart disease. So all of those risks were actually met and what stopped it was there was an increased risk in breast cancer for patients who had been on hormone replacement therapy. So now let's break, break down the paper a little bit. So the WHI was broken up um, and the first arm for the paper was focusing on estrogen and progesterone combined versus placebo. And this was in patients who had a uterus. There was also a parallel arm to this study that was looking at patients who were on unopposed estrogen, so no progesterone, versus placebo in patients without a uterus. So there was these two arms to the study. They were both stopped prematurely because of the breast cancer increased risk. So I wanna break down kind of what the paper was specifically saying and what were the flaws in those statements and then kind of what the research is showing right now. So premature evidence from the Rousseau et al. paper that came out in 2002 were the following stats. And this was that there was an increase in CHD was 1.29. For breast cancer, it was 1.26. Stroke was 1.41. And PE is pulmonary embolism was, was 2.13, which is huge. And now kind of going into the brief, for the breast cancer, for the 1.26, this was actually reanalyzed in 2006. Um, and this is reanalyzed in an adjustment setting. So they adjusted for certain confounding variables and groups to make sure that they were having the correct analysis. And they found that it was actually 1.20. But the range, and this was important, was 0 0.94 to 1.53. And if you actually look at patients who are hormone naive, so they've never taken hormones before getting HRT, the number was 1.09 and the range was between 0 0.86 and 1.40. So as I said earlier, the Rousseau et al. paper was stopped prematurely. It was supposed to go for eight and a half years starting in 1993, but it was stopped a little after five years. And that was because of the breast cancer and the no benefits in coronary artery disease. These risks were unadjusted and the adjustments that needed to have taken place for the paper when you're comparing the groups, what they needed to look at was clinical center, age, prior disease, and whether or not they were enrolled in a low fat diet. These things weren't adjusted in the analysis, and that led to those numbers that I said earlier um, causing cessation to the study. They also had the fact that, you know, they met that preset boundary for that breast cancer risk, which I already talked about when it was further analyzed in 2006, came down to, to areas that showed that there was no significant increase. The other thing that the paper wanted to focus on was that there was a benefit in decreased in osteoporotic fractures. And so what they did is they actually followed patients after 2002 because, you know, the, pay, the study was stopped at that point because of the terrible effects that HRT was having on these patients. And what they actually showed was that there was an increase in the frequency of osteoporotic fractures in patients who had discontinued HRT. And so the osteoporotic fractures, there is like still a benefit and there probably is a therapeutic window for this. And this was also compounded on the CHD analysis for this as well. And this was in 2006 by ASEA et al. And what they were showing in this study was that there was a significant decrease in the composite coronary score for patients who were younger, so age 50 to 59. And they took all the patients in you know, the parallel arms. So they took patients who were on E plus P in the patients with the uterus, as well as E alone in without uterus, and they analyzed both of those together 
and they showed that there was an actual decrease in total mortality on patients who were on HRT. So the theory is that you know there must be a therapeutic window for giving patients HRT. So it's not that just any patient gets it and that's a benefit, but it's actually a certain subset of the population that should benefit from HRT use. And that brings me to reviewing table one for this NIH funded paper, which was looking at HRT use. And the average age for these patients was 63. And the average age for patients undergoing menopause is like 52, almost 53. So either way, these patients are 10 years out, 12 years out from undergoing menopause. And there are studies that do show that there is an increased risk um, when patients decline on their estrogen use, and that's what happens in menopause, um, or estrogen production. And it shows like these increased risks, and this is our like osteoporotic fractures, coronary artery disease. So, <clears throat> so giving patients hormone replacement therapy at any time doesn't really show a benefit. And that's fine because, you know, someone that's 12 years out, you can't give someone hormone replacement therapy and that reverses what has been compounding over the past 10 or 12 years. But what they showed was that giving patients hormones recently after undergoing menopause, less than three years or within the age group of 50 to 59, that there were benefits. There was decreased risk and fracture risk. There was also decreased risk in CHD. So there is a benefit for giving patients at least hormones in this a short period. The, the thing though is like, you know, now it's an issue about breast cancer potentially. And as I said earlier, there was no increased risk significantly in the breast cancer risk. And there were additional papers that went over this to kind of reassess and reanalyze one of the main risks and the reason why the WHI paper was stopped prematurely. And so looking at it, the background prevalence of getting cancer, so regardless, I don't care whether you're on hormones or not, if you're at age 50 and so one of the things I wanna talk about though is now the increased risk for breast cancer or the concern for it. So the reason why the Rousseau et al. paper was stopped prematurely was because it met preset boundaries for breast cancer. So looking at the data now, the baseline understanding needs to be confirmed. So if you're age 50, the odds of you getting breast cancer by age 60 are around 2.8%. And if you add patients on now with HRT, the odds of you getting breast cancer by age 60 are around 3.37%. So there's a 0.67% increased risk of getting breast cancer by age 60 if you're on HRT. This relative risk needs to be compared to other factors that can increase the risk of breast cancer. And so for example, if you're obese, there is a far greater likelihood that you're gonna get breast cancer the risk between by age 60 if you're 50. Also, if you're a flight attendant and other things as well, like increase the risk as well. And those risks are greater than if you're simply on HRT. The other thing I wanted to focus on generally was I kind of why the paper could have been reorganized a little bit better. And there's a, a few main key factors and I'm gonna put up like a little slide right here, but um, this was truly not a randomized paper. And the reason why it wasn't truly randomized is even though there were the two arms, um, even after the patients were randomized, they could choose to confirm with their assigned treatment or not. So they could switch over or not. Also, there was an arm originally in the WHI 2002 paper where patients had a uterus and they had unopposed estrogen, so they weren't on progesterone. And during that study, there was a paper that came out that showed that it wasn't good to give unopposed estrogen to patients with a uterus. So all those patients were unblinded and then told to now have to be on E plus P. So, you know, all those patients were now aware, which read, which read to the fact that, you know, the unblinding for this, for this study was around 45% in patients with E plus P. Also, women were given warnings when they were in the experimental arms that there was an increased risk for MI, stroke, and pulmonary embolism. So they were further unaware and they were now aware of the risks that potentially could happen. So that was the main findings of the paper. I hope it helped. It's kind of all over the place, but pretty much the WHI paper was premature. They presented data that showed unadjusted risks and these unadjusted relative risks then stopped the study. And when they were readjusted, they showed no significance. This fact has led to the decreased use of HRT, which has now been further studied to show that there actually are beneficial effects that I've gone over in this video. And so now we're kind of working toward trying to reuse HRT in appropriate populations.
but simply giving it to patients in the postmenopausal period for late onset treatment of therapy is definitely not what HRT should be used for, but HRT should really be focused on patients in the early postmenopausal period and regarding symptom management. So this is hot flashes and such. I hope this helps. Um, I'll put the links to all the papers below and I will see you for the next video.